I'll just do that. Okay, we should be recording. All right. So, um, welcome. This is um, Mother's Day, so I hope that everyone has had a good Mother's Day. Um, apologize for having the meeting on Mother's Day, but uh, timelines got into the way, and I can explain later if you like. Um, but anyway, so this is a special meeting. Um, you have the agenda. Uh, so I would like someone to call the meeting to order. Call it to order, Cabot. Yeah. yeah. The meeting's called to order. Um, anyway, I'd like to have like to have a motion to adopt this agenda. So moved. So moved. Who did? Who who was first? Okay. I think Tom was first and Mary Beth. I was first. Right behind her. Right. Okay. Tom was first and Mary Beth seconded. Uh, all those in favor of adopting this agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Motion carries. Agenda adopted. Uh, first topic is open forum. Uh, the, the rules that we have applied previously still apply. Three minutes per speaker, 15 minutes total. Do we have anyone that would like to speak? Yes, this is Greg Blank. Okay, um, so he's not muted, that's good. And Greg, do you wanna go on video? Sure. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, happy Mother's Day to all of the, uh, to all of the mothers out there. Um, I, I think you've already, uh, Linda, started to address my first question about why the meeting needs to be held at uh, six o'clock on, on Mother's Day. So um, if you can uh, explain that uh, a little bit later, like you said, that would be fantastic. Sure. Um, beyond that, uh, I just wanted to ask the question about why we're doing, uh, why the open forum is at the beginning of this uh, agenda, because uh, it would seem to make more sense uh, since this is a special meeting and since other meetings have followed a uh, an agenda where open forum happens later in the meeting, it would seem to make more sense to me to be able to, to have an open forum and solicit uh, member comments uh, after uh, some or all of, of your agenda items have been gone over. Uh, and uh, you don't have to answer that now, I'm just throwing it out there. And uh, I just- Let's answer it as it comes. Um so I can talk about the timeline and I can also talk about the open forum. Let's talk okay. about open forum first. If you look at previous minutes, you see that it comes after the president's report, uh, the treasurer's report, uh, the general manager's report. It comes before we get into any business. So we did this no differently in that regard. Now, okay. if you want to talk about time sensitivity, um, I'm happy to do that. We're under, okay. a little, we're under a little bit of a time crunch to get our slate in by the 17th because that's what the code requires. So I did not get the slate myself until May 4th. And I received that from Penny uh, along with the, a list of telling me who met, which members were current on their assessments and which were not because you need to be a member in good standing to be a candidate. So I noted, as did the nominating committee, that there were several members that were not in good standing. So that creates a little bit of a dilemma. What do we do with that? So we had our nominations committee meeting on May 6th, which was Thursday, and we decided that we needed to meet because there were decisions that we could not make uh, unilaterally. So immediately Thursday, I started calling board members to try to get their availability. The first availability that the board members had was today. And needed today because as you will see later in the agenda, we want to address and notify the individuals who are in arrears that they are in arrears and try to give them an opportunity to cure. 
and then we have to get the slate out by the 17th. That's why we did what we did. Does that make sense? Uh, it does. It does. Uh, and my only other comment about all of it was, you know, I've been uh, talking about optics for a long time. And although the explanation makes sense, I think that the choice to have the meeting at, at six o'clock on Mother's Day uh, precludes a lot of people's ability to to attend the meeting. And maybe they can, you know, watch it in the coming days and they'll get that explanation. But, you know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of I'll put it this way. I've seen a lot of negative discussion going around about the uh, the day and the time of the meeting. And I just wanted to make sure the board was aware of that and understand that these are the kinds of things when when we are going through situations as tenuous as we've been through with some of these things recently, that when things happen like this, uh, the optics of it all definitely have a negative impact on the membership. Well, um, appreciate your comment. I, I share to uh, the best of my ability why we ended up here. It was either that or not, should we vote not to allow these individuals to uh, cure before May 17th, then it's not an issue. But if we are going to allow them as a board to cure, need to have some time for them to get the notice and then get the money in. Okay. So sometimes we are just where we are. Uh, and the good news is, it wouldn't, it, and the good news is, it probably wouldn't be any of our choice to be here on Mother's Day at six either, except we have business that needs to be conducted. Yep. My family's downstairs right now having Mother's Day dinner, so I'm not. My family's about it. here too. <laughs> okay. Uh, anybody else wishing to speak during open forum? We've got a few more minutes. Okay. I'll do open forum real quick. I just want to tell everybody I can't get my camera on. I am here, but I can't get my camera on. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with this machine. We can hear you. Okay. So that's good at least. And I'm assuming you can hear us. Okay. Can you see us, Jim? I can see everybody except me. <laughs> well, I, I don't I'm want to say about anything. that. Um, if we're ready, then I'd like to move on to the next agenda item, which is uh, filling the Board of Trustee Secretary Officer um, duties. So, Linda, um, when Cheryl said she was leaving, I did offer to fill that spot and asked her what would be required. Um, she did go over it with me. Um, so, I'm happy to do that these last couple months. I don't think... Um, necessarily I would want to do it, you know, for when new candidates come on board, but I said I would fill in for her if the board was okay with that. Uh, okay. Linda, I, I'd like to make a motion that Mary Beth be the new secretary through the uh, August election. I'll second that. Okay. First, uh, Tim Weibel, second Cabot Ray. Uh, any discussion on that? Okay, seeing no discussion, let's go ahead and vote. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. Uh, motion carries. Um, moving on then to the next issue, we have the review of the candidates late. So, as I mentioned to you a moment ago, uh, we did get the candidates slate. We have 11 candidates. Um, we have a few that are in arrears. Um, and Penny, uh, when she sent that out to me, defined arrears to be, um, how do I best describe it? If you are a member uh, and you are wanting to be eligible to vote in the election, you have to be current through the month previous to the election, which is August. So that means you need to be paid through July to be able to vote in August. Applying that same criteria to our candidates, we had several who were not. And that criteria also includes fines, which are treated a little differently in the code. 
Linda, I'd, I'd like to make a motion to allow those folks some time to pay so they can remain on the ballot as candidates. So I'd like to make a motion to allow any candidates for the Board of Trustees until noon on May 17th to bring their assessments current and to pay any outstanding penalty or fine on their account and remain current until the vote in August in order to continue to be named as a candidate for the Board of Trustees. Uh, is there a second? I'll second that. Discussion. Uh, Linda, how will you contact these people uh, that we're talking about? Well, I'm intend to. Um, I didn't know how the vote would go, but I intend to talk with Penny first thing in the morning and ask that she reach out and send them emails. Um, and let them know. And I want her to run the numbers again to make sure that in this interim time period, people haven't gotten their accounts up to date or paid their fines. The only thing I would suggest, if, if you're going to do it via email, that you ask for a reply so that we know that they oh, right. return receipt. Receive. That's, That's a good. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, let me let me make a note of that. Yeah, Linda. Also. I, I, Real quick, I just I couldn't hear what Tim actually said. Could he say that again and, and uh, really hug that mic, Tim? You don't have a very strong voice. I just suggested that when the emails are sent out that they ask for a reply. So that gives us an idea or, or we know that they did receive the, the email request. Yes. Thank you. I'm sorry. I, uh, I have a little trouble hearing you, Tim. Okay. What about I'll sending the letter? Talk a little bit louder. I did want to also send the letter. It's not that many people, is it? I uh, know. Just to double up, I think that's a good idea uh, to make sure we do anything we can to get the word through. Let me ask you this, Linda, because uh, I, I know we're talking about assessments, you know, up to date. Uh, obviously, the monthly assessment, like the roads assessment, like well, we're done with the dam assessment, uh, pretty much. So, uh, what other categories? fall under that, uh, that would be a requirement of a candidate to be current on? Oh, um, like I said, fines, Article 9 fines. There's language. Gosh, I'm trying to remember exactly where it is. I think, Cabot, it would be the monthly assessments, too, that you're referring to. Oh, yes, monthly I, assessment, yeah. dam assessment, road assessment. All that stuff that I was wondering beyond that, beyond oh. those standard assessment fees. Mm -hmm. if, if I think the language that. says if they owe any money to Hideaway Hills at all for any any reason. Any financial <laughs> obligation to the club is what it says under Section 2, <laughs> Member in Good Standing. I have some oh, exact language. Uh, let's see. Pursuant to the da, 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 da. So I think you're right, Mary Beth. And then Article 2, Section 2 talks about uh, Article 9 and being required to uh, be paid or be considered in default and therefore not in good standing. So I think that covers the, um, I guess, the landscape of what would need to be paid. Cabot, does that answer your question? Yeah, I think so. Just I, I didn't know beyond the standard, you know, fees what that referred to. So thanks. So did we have a first and second then? All right. Yes. And um, if. Do we have any other discussion? If not, uh, let's vote on the motion. All of those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion carries. Um, the next agenda item um, talks about uh, the code of regulations and the nominating committee and how we have done nominations in the past 
um, and how we should probably do them in the future. I see that there are uh, a number of folks from the nominating committee uh, on tonight, so thank you for attending. But the nominating committee, the language, and I'll have to find it here. And yes, I do still use paper sometimes. For whatever reason, I do like it. It's on page 18. Oh, okay. I was working my way there. <laughs> okay. So the nominating committee um, says that um, the committee shall nominate persons from eligible board members, various committees, and the membership at large. So the committee can select from a wide range of individuals. All nominees must be in good standing. The nomination so made shall be posted in a notice on the bulletin board of the lodge at least 90 days before the election. That's May 17th. So we will post it at the bulletin board on the lodge Monday. Not that anybody can see it, but we will also do an e-blast and post it on our uh, club website. Anyway, um, such notice to be signed by a duly authorized representative representative of the nominating committee. Additional nominations may be made by petition with a minimum of 15 member signatures, but no person shall be eligible for election whose name has not been posted at least 80 days before the election. So I've looked at that and I've looked at that and I've wondered and pondered why we do how we do. Um, because the nominating committee does some work, but you know we send out applications and, and people apply. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, we did that this year, but I just don't know that it exactly follows what the code of regulation says. So let's let's give an example. If we were to follow what the code of regulations say for the nominating committee language, last year um, the nominating committee didn't necessarily reach out and select me, but I applied. But really what should have happened is the nominating committee should have selected me, and if I wasn't selected, then I could have gotten a petition and gotten five, 15 signatures. But we didn't do that, and we haven't done that. So we are not really following what our own code says. Um, and I have, I did talk with outside counsel about it because I was just kind of, I'm like, what does this really mean? And um, he pretty much said what I just told you. So we have a situation now where we've done um, our nominations, so to speak, um, the way that we've always done them, sent out applications and it's just, it's open. I am not suggesting that we change that. But I do think that it is not in keeping with the code. So I would like a motion, if someone is willing to make it, to continue to follow the practice for this year and to begin to follow the language of the code in next year's election. So in other words, you're saying that we're not going to touch that this no. year, which I think is, is fair uh, based on how close we're getting to the election. And uh, I, I know I went, I didn't do that when, when I ran, I didn't go through that procedure. So I, I definitely think that, yeah, we leave it alone this year. Um, Excuse so. me, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent clear on what you're saying that the, the nomination, the nominating committee is not doing something that they should do. Is that what you're saying? Well, I'm saying that we as a club are not doing we're really not following uh, the code. The code says nominating committee reaches out and selects X number of people. Let's say it's five, let's say it's six. Um, then if more people other than those that were selected wish to apply, they can then apply within that window of 90 to 80 days. So they can say, hey, I'm gonna get a petition, 15 signatures, and I'm gonna be on the ballot. It's really a, a two-part process. 
and we've been treating it pretty much as a one part process. Is what I'm saying. It's so. Go ahead, Linda. Are you asking for a motion then that? For this year, we allow candidates who didn't follow the code to go ahead and still run and have their name. And then starting next year, well, that we follow the code. Yeah, kind of. I'm not saying that the candidates didn't follow it. I'm saying that the club really didn't follow uh, the procedure that should have been followed. And we haven't been. So I'm just so, pointing out that there is a procedure that we should follow that we haven't been following. But let's not change it now. So you're asking for a motion effective next year, we start following the code. Correct. I'll make so a motion the starting. committee not accept somebody who would like to run for the board? I mean, that we have a tough enough time getting people to run in the first place, and you want to go and make it more difficult to for people to run. You know, I don't think I don't, that's yeah. what she's saying, because she's actually suggesting that we do what we have been doing and, and whoever has applied is running and but she's trying to point out there's a discrepancy with what we're supposed to be doing versus um given how it's worded in the code that's all she's saying i i uh i'm going to give you a little bit of history on this okay uh, uh several years ago when None of the people that were on this board or the board before or the board before that. The nominating committee took it upon themselves to be judge and jury on this. And uh, they, they got the people that they wanted nominated. And I don't know if you remember this at all, Krieger, but Jim Krieger, but you might help me if, if I'm doing this wrong. And what was happening is people would turn their uh, their application enter the resume into the nominating committee and the nominating committee would refuse them so this second section in there was brought forth and i believe it was bucky childers that brought it forward uh and put in there that 10-day service but the nominating committee to me uh, and i'm reading the code evidently different than you are and i've got it in front of me here is supposed to solicit people and they do not make a decision on, well, we want this one to run, but we don't want this one to run. That That's a board decision. And uh, that second paragraph was slipped in there, and this was several years ago. Uh, so how, to how, stop the nominating committee from selecting the people that did put in an application, and this has actually happened. I remember this. It actually happened. The nominating committee was uh going through and they say well yeah we want joe but now we don't want tom to run and then they would turn in just the ones that they wanted to run uh jim krieger were you around then can you help me on this or not yeah that's consistent with my recollection as well i wasn't on the board i was on the management committee when it happened but yeah there was some controversy regarding people who had given an application or were interested and then they were not forwarded so that is consistent with my memory so why is that second sec section in the code then, Jim? I think I'm, he's saying, Linda, uh, Jim, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he's saying that the nominating board wouldn't let other people run. They picked who they wanted and wouldn't let other people run. And so it prohibits that from happening. So the uh, language- Everything's um, kind of chopped. Can you hear, Jim? Yeah, uh, Jim Krieger, can you hear me? Because you all of a sudden you just uh, froze. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. I mean, I, I said what I said, and then I muted myself again. But but I can hear you just fine. Oh, okay. So you're in agreement that this is what, the reason that second was put in there. And, that's uh, that's that is that is my recollection. Yeah, Jim, it is. So the the second. I'm sorry. Go, somebody was speaking. Well, I just, I'm asking Jim and Jim a question. The way it reads under section three is, so the nominating committee shall nominate members for the board of trustees for the upcoming election. And then if other people want to run, they're allowed. They just have to get 15 signatures to be compliant with the code. And anybody can probably get 15 signatures. And they're allowed to run as long as the board says yes, correct? And, and well, they're in good standing. Right. I'm, re I'm, I'm reading that different from them from you, Mary Beth. I'm reading that uh, 
the nominating committee is a committee to basically look for applications and take them. And then the board makes the final decision on that, not the nominating committee. Uh, they don't throw out, uh, they don't throw out applications themselves. Their job is to, to find people. And then the board's job is to accept the people or not. I agree. Okay, so well, what the language says is they're supposed to nominate members for the board of trustees to run and that then they give those proposed members to the board of trustees, including the 15, the people that obtained 15 signatures. And then the board says, uh, has some input on it. That's just, I think what the language says. I understand what you're saying about the history. Well, see, now I disagree with you. I'm reading that the different way. There's nothing in there that the, says that the nominating committee has the authority to accept or, uh, unaccept members who turn in their reservation or in their application. Uh, no. I, no, I guess it ain't, it ain't broke. It's been going on real well for years and years and years, just the way it is. And what that, uh, the, there was two reasons for that. And it, and it was used here not too long ago by a board member that got on. But the one reason was, as I told you before, and the second reason was, if somebody wanted to get in, get their application in after they were done, they thought, no, I don't know, I, 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 I want to run for the board. Then they have 10 days to do it. But I don't think it's fair for the nominating committee to say, yeah, you can run and then no. And then they only have 10 days to get their signatures and get it in there. Uh, to me, it's working the way that the, the, uh, the uh, code of regulations read just the way we're doing it. The nominating committee gets the, the, the members that want to run. And uh, then anybody that changes their mind and decides they wants to run, want to run afterwards. It's simply in there so that the nominating committee does not have the authority to just automatically throw somebody out. I, I think I would like to make a suggestion. <clears throat> I think that we should have, um, we should get clarity from our outside counsel on this and let it be what it is for right now. I agree with that. And I, I actually would like to not necessarily tonight, but at some point discuss uh, how the nomination committee is determined and what their criteria is when they go out to select members to run because I don't even know who's on the nominating committee to begin with. Number one, I don't know who selected them. Uh, I don't think the board had any say in that. And then last, um, I don't even know who they selected yet. Um, well, we have we have eleven members uh, on the slate, and like I said, um, we have several with uh, outstanding. Um, you know, outstanding issues regarding whether or not they're in good standing. If you'd like, I can give you read off that list right now. Melinda? No, no, no. Which, which members did the nominating committee recommend? They didn't recommend all 11 that are on the slate. Is that correct? That's correct. So that's so, my point. Who are the ones that they recommended? Um, so if it makes a difference, uh, Patrick Connor was recommended, Chaz Cross, Linda Hiles, I mean, Linda Hodge, mm, Tom Murphy, and Doug Parker. So five, five members. Yeah. Okay. I just wondered, I, I did not know you know, how many were on, were recommended and how many volunteered through uh, resume. And I wasn't distinguishing because that's why we brought it here because we weren't going to distinguish. But so anyway. I think, I think I agree with Tim that for transparency sake, we need to know who these members are of this committee that made this recommendation of these sure. five. 
Sure. And I mean, and uh, I mean, I and that that should be something that uh, becomes a point of discussion down the road. Okay. Well, I can tell you who's on the nominating committee. Pursuant. Okay. If you look at the code. Um, uh, the president shall appoint from the members, two of whom shall not be members of the board, meaning three can be members of the board. Um, I am on it because it says uh, the president is chairman to nominate members of the board of trustees for the ensuing election. Okay. okay. So I'm on it. Um, Annie's on it. I think we're the only two board members on it. Cheryl was on it. Oh, Cheryl was on it. That's right. Cheryl was on it. So now only two. But then John Cook, uh, Jill Vink, and that's all with the um, loss of Cheryl. So it's a five-member committee, and that's um, what the um, code calls for. And I think you did uh, you did announce that earlier in several months ago in a meeting, and we actually voted on it. Who was on the nominating committee? So I know we'd cover a lot of ground, so it's probably hard to remember, but uh, we did actually vote on that. We vote. We voted on that in January. The one thing that we did not do is we did not have one report from this committee as to who they had uh, who they had selected, uh, recruited, whatever you want to call it, until the uh, April meeting. And there was a very, uh, Linda made a very uh, just generic motion or note that they had their committee members uh, or they had their nominations and didn't, and then went no further than that. There was very little, well, it wasn't not very little, there was absolutely no Communication. Well, wait a minute. Wait a as, minute. The board, as the board in a board meeting uh, from January, well, from the February meeting through the March meeting, we heard no report on what they had done. Oh, yeah. So, so we, go, well, go ahead, Annie. I was just going to say so, Eric, Jim Krieger, and I were on the committee last year, and we did not report back to the board on anything until the actual candidates all came in. So, if that was supposed to be done, we didn't do it last year. If we had done it last year, I think we would have done it this year. It's that that is kind of, I guess, news to me what you're calling out, Jim. And I will tell you that we didn't have um, any firm candidates until until recently. So there wouldn't have been anything to report, Jim. Other than what we had reported earlier. Well, I think we need to leave it alone, as you said, this year. And I don't think we need to make any kind of a decision on this. Uh, we've got a full year to make a decision on uh, whether whether the, the, the Constitution or the, the Code of Regulations is what you say or what you read in, read it and what I read in it, which one is right or wrong. Jim, I don't have a problem with that. I wanted to bring it forward, though. But I do want the board to acknowledge that they are good with the slate, uh, the full slate. Which is what we should be doing right now anyway, is voting on the full slate. However, I don't think we can vote on the full slate until uh, after we find out if these uh, ones that are not in good standing pay up, which means we'd have to do an e-vote on Monday to accept them and then get it up. When I say Monday, I'm talking about the, the, 17th. Uh, the 17th. We well, just we, almost have to do an e-vote on that. We're getting pretty tight, Jim, because if we wait in order to meet, well, you know this, in order to meet the code requirement of May 17th, we've got to get, well, that stupid where we posted on the bulletin board that no one will see, but any, you know, an e-blast out. Um, and we need to do that on the 17th. Now, I don't, I don't know how we do all of that on the 17th. Well, you said by noon, I, I'm just saying that how can we vote on uh, these candidates unless we word it, the word, the motion that assuming that, you, you know, we accept them as long as they're all current by the 17th. That's, that'd be the only way that we could vote on that tonight. 
I think that can be that should be worded that way. Sure. I do too. Um, let's go oh, over. Mark? Let's. Do you want to go over who the candidates are? A list. So you have yes, that. Please. Yes, please. I think the members need to know. All right. Um, Jeff Barron is a candidate. Greg Blank is a candidate. Patrick Connor is a candidate. Chaz Cross is a candidate. Uh, Margaret Euler is a candidate. Jim Hiles is a candidate. Linda Hodge is a candidate. Eric Lapp is a candidate. Tom Murphy is a candidate. Doug Parker is a candidate. And Stephanie Wolf is a candidate. Uh, do we have a motion on the table to originally, well, there was an original motion before we started this discussion that was not seconded. Do we have a motion? Didn't somebody make a motion that we do this the way you said before, except these people uh, for this year and then not, but not in the future? Because if there is, that should be rescinded and I'll make a motion to do it the way I said it. I don't think we ever got there, Jim. Okay, fine. We don't have a secretary. <laughs> Mary, Beth, Mary Beth is probably tracking that, but I don't recall it ever came to that point. I don't know that we had a, a formal motion. Did someone make a formal motion on that? Mm. I'm okay. not sure if I did or not at this point. <laughs> I, I, I honestly thought that Mary Beth did, and then either I or Jim interrupted from that point forward. So I, I think I, I said something. I think Tim, I said, uh, like I make a motion that we go no, keep the process the same for this year. It was about the process, not about accepting candidates. Yeah, that's correct. But I guess what I'm saying, what Jim's saying is, because we want to continue to discuss the process or the method going forward, I really don't think we want to address that motion doing it the way we're doing it this year versus how it might go forward next year. I think we want to drop that till we discuss it more. Does that sound? I'm right? happy to rescind it. Okay. Thank you. So in, okay. rescinding, in rescinding the uh, motion, I believe we have to have a vote to accept the rescension. That's correct. So all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Motion is rescinded. Uh, let's have uh, a new motion. Jim, do you want to make that motion? Yeah, uh, I will m make the motion that we will accept the 11 candidates uh, for the uh, as running for the board, with the exception that four. Did you say four are delinquent? Yeah, I think you did. Well, four are not in good standing. That they be in good standing by the 17th of May. Well, by... I second that. By, by noon. Whole, by noon by, on the 17th. I, I'd like you to finish the motion, Jim, with by 12 noon on May 17th. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, then uh, I make the motion that we accept the 11 candidates to be, to run for the board with the exception of any candidate that is not current right now, be current by noon on the 17th of May. I second that. And then what we will do is on the 17th, we'll have a uh, e-vote to accept the, the final slate now. Uh, you guys are all going to have to be uh, jolly on the spot because we'll need to get that uh, e-vote done before the um, folks leave from the office, and that's 6 o'clock. So it's going to have to be out, voted on, and results back in so they can get the e-blast out. I'll tell you what might speed that up too, Linda, is if the, you would let the board know uh, as these four become current, so that uh, we know, immediate, you know, immediately at noon, we can, you don't even need to call for an e-vote. We can just eat, I, I, I e-vote that, uh, that, they're, that the members are okay. Well, In other words, what I guess I'm saying in the long run is just let us know where they stand as they come in 
or at least let us know like on Thursday or on Friday before the, uh, what's the 17th? Is that a Monday? Yeah. Yeah, that's a Monday. It's yeah. the day before our next board meeting. And the okay. office. You know, you can yes. let us know like, like on Friday that they are in there. Or Thursday, I guess, is the last day the office is open. I think yeah. if, if that's possible, if, if if Linda knows that, let's say three out of the four are current, she could at least give us a heads up on that. Um, sure. If all four of them are current, then, then we're good. I can send the evo out right away then. Yep. Yep. So are we voting then on this motion? We have a second, don't we? Didn't we? Yeah, didn't yeah, Cabot, second. Cabot second did it. Okay. Um, can you read? Can you read back the motion? I mean, we all know the general gist of it, but Mary Beth or oh, Jim's Jim's <laughs> made a motion that we accept the eleven candidates as long as they're all in good standing by May uh, May seventeenth at noon, and it's been seconded. Okay. All all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Motion carries. Hey, Linda, is there a standardized form that people need to use to collect this 15 signatures? You know, I don't know. Or they just get a sheet of paper and turn them in. Uh, it could be as simple as I support um, Tom Matthews running for to be a candidate for the board and <laughs> in this election i suppose linda what was that question tom said tom wanted to know if there is a form for the petition and i said that i was not aware of one but that it could be as simple as you know i tom matthews am running for the board 2021 um, and your signature represents support whatever and then people sign their names 15 people or there could be one made out um but that's not for right this moment okay so moving i think we're we're done right okay and jim you all right yeah i'm fine okay all right, so uh, next agenda item is vacancy on the board. As you know, uh, Cheryl Burnside um, has, they've sold her, <laughs> she and Mike, so they are uh, no longer members of Hideaway Hills. Uh, sorry to see them go, obviously, but um, so there is a vacancy on the board that will be a vacancy until August. I spoke with, uh, with or I emailed Jim Krieger. Jim Krieger's the next one on the list as far as uh, candidates um, from, uh, from the last election that was available. I and mean, it's been our kind of our tradition in the past to uh, bring on the candidate that was next on the list as far as amount of votes. Um, Jim did share with me that uh, he would not be interested in taking that spot. Uh, the next person after that would be Jeff Barron. I'd like to nominate Jeff Barron to be the next board member uh, on our board of trustees. So you are, um, is your motion to fill the vacancy then with Jeff Barron? If I didn't say that correctly, then yes, that's I'd, like, I'd make a motion to fill the vacancy with Jeff Barron as the next person in line as far as amount of votes in the last election. Okay, do we have a second? I'll second that. Okay, Jim. Jim, any discussion on that? I'll just say that that hasn't always been the case. In fact, the last two years we've had a vacancy happen on the board and we didn't fill it because we were just within like right now, just a few months of the next election. And the, the term would really only be for three months until the election. And so my mind was like, why, why won't we just let the membership decide who fills that seat? 
I can appreciate that, Annie. Um, but in the past, the last two times that's happened, we have not had anybody extra running for the board at that point. We we filled the butt we filled the amount of positions that we're at because that's all the people that ran. Now we have some extra candidates and we have somebody who is certainly willing to serve on our board. And we've got three months of service left with a lot of decisions to make. I can't see why anybody would not want to bring somebody on who's willing to serve and volunteer our community. I agree with Andy. I mean, with three months left, for them to come up to speed with all the history that's been through the last year, it just, I say, let it play itself out. If you select someone, I feel like it gives them an advantage in the election too. They're already on the board, their name's out there. Doesn't make sense to me. No, I in addition, I, I, in, a, in addition to that, um, you know, it always, it hasn't always been historical. They took the next person in line. I think Eric, when you were appointed, Stan Durham was the next person in line and you got appointed before Stan Durham. But I think also if we were going to fill it, we should fill it with someone with experience who could help us in those last few months, as opposed to, you know, someone who it's nothing against Jeff Barron, but he's never been a board member. And as we all know, now that we're on the board, it takes a long time to get up to speed and learn what's really going on. And if he was one of the other people that it's that's running as a candidate who had served on the board before, it'd make a whole lot more sense to me to fill that than leaving it open for two more months. Um, yeah, I just don't see it being that helpful. I think I, 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 go ahead. Go ahead, Tim. I, I discussed this with Linda uh, previously, and I, I don't think it's mandatory uh, for us to fill that slot for the remainder of the, the uh, two or three months that are left. Um, so it's not it's not necessary that we actually do it. When Dennis Aubrey passed, we did not. Uh, sadly, when he passed, we did not uh, fill his position. Is that correct? And no, what about? Not, no, that is not correct. I was I was I filled his position at okay. the election. At the, at election. the election, you did. At no, the, I'm at, at the election. The, that's correct. The remainder yeah. of the term is what I'm talking about. The remainder of his term and. Uh, has that ever? I mean, I know there's a tradition here, but it's kind of like it's, it's there, there's been a couple of times. Where, I don't know in the last five years where that's happened, right? How many months did we go after uh, uh, Mr. Aubrey passed away before the election? How many is that? Just a couple months also. It, it, I, I'm not. I can't be a hundred percent sure, but I think it was a couple or three months. It wasn't a, a long time. And uh, again, in the case with Mr. Aubrey. There was not another candidate that had run for the board the previous year to fill that spot. We now have somebody that has run for the board, wants to work on with, with our committee, wants to go and volunteer for the community. I don't see how it could be a problem. And in the case where, thank you, Mary Beth, for bringing that up. Uh, if I remember correctly, it was uh, Mark Holt had, had resigned and Linda was next in line and she took Mark Holt's spot. And then when it came to uh, Donna Stage, I believe, is who resigned. And Stan Durham had never been to a single meeting before. I had been to the previous six. I've been volunteering on all types of committees. And so the board chose to go and put me on the board at that point because I made good sense. So I understand that it's not always, that's always not always been the tradition. But in this case, we have somebody who wants to go on to serve our community and he's next in line based on the amount of votes. I don't see why it, it just makes good sense. He um, is running. He is running. Correct. He is. He, yeah, he was on there. He's on the list for to run. Um, so the people could decide with the next election to put him on. The language is um, may fill. It's not mandatory. The vacancy doesn't have to be filled. <laughs> As long okay, as I'm gonna, well, I, we, we I'm keep gonna, hearing from our board, let the people decide, let the people decide, let the people decide. Why would we not let the people decide? Because this is an interim uh, commitment. And I'm going to go back in history here. And in the predominant cases that this has happened in the last several years, 
and I'm going back 10, maybe even 15 years, that the next in line has been appointed. Uh, as we go back in time, in a, most of the time, now there's been a couple of times that, like you said, that they didn't fill, or in Eric's case, we thought that uh, he knew more about what was going on. And so we filled it with him. But the proponent of the times that this has happened, we have filled the board to, to keep the board at the nine that we're supposed well, to. Well, I think, Jim, I think there's times when you haven't. Ginger told me she's been secretary and treasurer at the same time before because you didn't fill the board when she was on there. Was there anybody in line? That's, I keep going. Well, back. I don't know, but I don't know that. You know, I, I, I understand your argument, Eric. It, we're we're kind of going circular here. Do we have any new comments to make? New thoughts? If not, um, let's go ahead and address the motion with a vote. The motion was. There, there has not been a motion yet, Linda. I thought that I made a motion, Jim. Yeah, Eric made the motion, and Jim, you seconded it. Yeah, you're correct. That's right. That's right. So, um, Mary Beth, could you read that motion, please? Eric made a motion to have Jeff Barron fill the empty seat on the board until the election, and Jim uh, Jim Lloyd seconded that motion. Okay. So that's the motion on the on the floor. Let's go ahead and take a vote. All of those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Who do we have as aye? We have uh, Jim, Eric, anyone else? All of those opposed, please say nay. 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 So the nays are... I said nay, Annie said nay. Mary Beth, Tom, Tim, and Cabot. The nays carry. Well, um, I think that's it for this meeting. We have a lot to do this week. I will be in touch with you um, on what's happening with our nominees and um, keep you apprised. I will also talk with Penny tomorrow, ask her to get out an email with return receipt, and we can also send out uh, letters. So we'll get that done tomorrow, so. Would it be possible to also text them just so that we've covered the bases? If we, if we have their um phone number and it's accurate we could i just um I should be on the resume shouldn't it uh, i'll have to check it could be it may very well, well. It, it, it's going to be in the the, the uh, directory you know jim jim will try okay and if it's not okay. an accurate number then we're not going to be able to do it but anyway we will do that we'll keep you apprised and thank you for your attention and is there a motion to adjourn i'll make that motion to arrival second anyone i'll second okay annie all right all in favor please say aye aye, aye. any opposed motion carries we stand adjourned thank you for your participation mary beth we Adjourned at 6.55 p.m. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Have a good rest of your evening. Good night.